Welcome to PEDEX Cape Town's Intersections of Change Digital Program. These online conversations give us an opportunity to connect with our TEDx community and to learn more about how they are adjusting to a COVID-19 world. I'm Renal Smithway, the Ambassador of BUDS at TEDx Cape Town, and for this event, I'm honoured to be facilitating conversations with four talented African artists, including Rushdin Jazz, Malim Wevi, Winslow Stolfek, and Zolani Mahola. Now, if you've ever been to a TEDx Cape Town event, you would know that when you enter our venues, you are welcomed with sounds and creative expressions by talented African artists. And that's what we are aiming to achieve with this event. We invite you to experience conversations of how creativity has inspired hope for our artists. It's a creative journey of self-reflection. I trust that you will not only enjoy the sounds, but also that you will receive the message. I'm trying to artist and TEDx friend Winslow Stolfek, and he has performed on our stage eight years ago. And to him, life is the continuous flow that we find ourselves in, subjects to the tide of birth and rebirth. As we survive and thrive, it's time to recreate, to redirect, to rethink and to reevaluate. I'm waiting for Winslow to join me up in this virtual stage all the way from Johannesburg. Ah, oh. how are you? Beautiful, look how amazing your background looks. <laughs> Love the place. I had to show up, guys. It's still Cape Town, you know. We have to represent, no matter where we are. <laughs> I mean, I totally understand that. This is the first time I've decided to wear hats. Love it. Totally love it. Looking good. Winslow, I'm so, so blessed to have you on our virtual stage because every time I watch your performance from 2012, it just feels like a renewed lens that I'm watching at you. Um, but there's one thing that I know that you shared with me before today. You said that COVID gave you time to write again and to explore the wounds that you've been carrying. So the audience is in for a bit of this conversation, but tell us a little bit about your process of unlearning during this time. Wow, okay. Um, first of all, before I, uh, before I say anything, just, you know, um, big up to everybody on the on the roster tonight. Um, Rushdin, Mal, and Zolani, it's really an honor to be amongst all of you. But um, for me, it was really about creating spaces within myself for new thoughts and ways of being that are conducive to where I find myself right now. You know, um, the process of, 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 of developing sugar water, putting, you know, writing the poetry, recording and shooting everything on my phone. And, and, and developing this project really forced me to let go of a lot of family and societal expectations of what it means to be a good person, what it means to be queer, you know, what it means to be a poet and an artist. And really just discarding the thoughts and opinions of other people that I've somehow managed to internalize and that were not in alignment with my personal self, um, you know, my personal truth, actually, you know. And no matter how I evolve, my essence and my personal truth remains the same. So it's about cutting through a lot of the noise and saying, okay, this is Winslow. This is what Winslow is about. This essence is not going to change. So how do I let go of all the source of being inadequate, disguised as insecurity, you know, um, whether they are my own or from what other people have said and not said. And, and that is really what Sugar Water forced me to do. It forced me to unlearn a lot of that. You know, yeah. I had to silence the naysayer inside of myself. Now yeah. I validate the art, you know. It's my vision yeah. and my voice is important. So beautiful space to land in. So you've been talking about sugar water. Yeah. Sugar yeah. Water is, I know what sugar water is. Tell us what sugar water is and how lockdown actually allowed sugar water to happen. So I've had this, um, I've been performing this year, well, my first, made 15 years that I've been on stage um, since my debut way back when in Cape Town. And I'd got it to a point where I really wanted to own my art. And because I'm in this visual, you know, multimedia world, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a project. I'm going to publish it online. I'm going to have full creative control. 
And that's what I did. So lockdown happened. And suddenly I'm by myself, self-isolating in my apartment. And, uh, and you know, and at that point, all these mental health issues started coming up for me. You know, I had to really confront things like my depression and my anxiety. Because I'm by myself. I can't see anybody. Because obviously everybody is um, protecting themselves. At that point, we were at level five. But who knew? We found that out afterwards. So I really just went, you know what? This project has been circling in my head. I'm going to dive it first into it. And that's what I did. I deleted all my social media off my phone. I, um, once it was safe and everybody had been self-isolating and we knew we were all in the clear, um, my incredible friend um, and neighbor, Rorisan Matuba, came over and grabbed my phone and we just started shooting content. And that is how this whole thing came together. I sat and I wrote. I really workshopped myself. So I went into very deep spaces. And what was really great is that of the six poems that form part of the project, and it's a beautiful story that it tells of, of, of love, learning, and life. Three of them were written during, well, during this lockdown period and basically just came out of me. When I sat down to record into my laptop that I'm speaking into now, just using GarageBand, um, they just freestyled their way out of me. So that was really great. What I love about what I'm hearing is how you manage to use very simple resources that most of us watching tonight have to our disposal. You've, you used it, you dug deep, and your creativity inspired hope for yourself, really, to, to just see the lockdown through. And sugar no, is now online. It's not just on your website, but it's also online with the National Arts Festival. Congratulations. Thank you. Like, <laughs> how incredible is that? A project that literally saved my life and kept me busy and focused and galvanized during a very unprecedented time um, mm -hmm. was picked up by the National Arts Festival Fringe and it's, re and it's available on demand um, um, on their mm -hmm. website on the 1st of July. And again, you know, just this opportunity to be able to go to the market theater and shoot this project. Um, just you just copy it for stage. You know, the funny yeah. thing is, Rana, <laughs> the funny thing is, I thought I'd only adapt this for stage next year sometime, you know, because you think to yourself, um, because I thought to myself, okay, fine, if I'm watching this lockdown thing happening and and this, what do they call it, this tiered response, can't get the word now. No, only by next year we'll have to adapt this for stage. And then meanwhile, we just had to do it um, about a month later. So really incredible and really just speaks to how art saves. Not just, the, not just the artist, but the audience. And, you know, just being able to express yourself. It is a lifesaver, you know. It's that core of, I don't know, that force, you know, that dung. You know, people, you know, that energy, that life force. What yeah. gives you that? And it's, yeah, I, guys, I can go on forever. <laughs> you know, the fact, you, you told me the other day that it's kind of beautifully aligned how in 2012, you performed What We Play As Now. Yeah. What else happened? I think the National Arts Festival, was there some alignment there? And now you're on our virtual stage and you're on our virtual stage. Yeah, no, but exactly, again, there's that thing of, you know, I've, and, you know, interestingly, I've been saying to a lot of people, you know, I'm starting to understand, and maybe it's just where I find myself now, that what is yours or what is meant to be yours will find you. And when I start to see the, the synchronicities, um, like you were saying, 2012, I did What We Play As Life on the TEDx stage at the, at the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town. And I was also at the National Arts Festival, um, took my um, poetry production, Freedom Dialogue. And now here we are, you know, again, um, yeah. Tate Cape Town, <laughs> virtual stage, and National Arts Festival at the same time. It is incredible, blows my mind. And that is the reason why I really felt, you know what, let me revisit this piece. Let me revisit the mm. poem. Let me read the words and, and see what the link is between then and now. And just, you know, breathe some new life into it. So really thankful that I got to do that. 
Mm -hmm. And audience is not aware of this, but you decided to reboot and you actually recorded some visuals this time with the performance. Yeah, no, this time we had a lot of fun. We sugar watered it, that's what <laughs> that's my team calls it. So we literally shoot everything on this phone. <laughs> I edit it on there, I record it to my laptop, and it's lo-fi, but it's honest. You know, Mal touched on it. The one yeah. thing that this period has given me, this lockdown period and this um, re surgence of art inside of me because I was always too tired I was always too busy you know there were always reasons why I would you know that that um inner saboteur as RuPaul would say um would rear its head and yeah. there's an honesty that exists right now there's an honesty that persists and I'm really thankful for that because you know because what I'm doing is so lo-fi and so honest and so true to me I feel it's actually mm -hmm. it's the best expressions of self. So I've picked up some weight. So the, the, the video was shaky at times. You know, so the audio is not the best always, but it's true to me and it's it's honest and it's art and it's mine. You know, it's my expression is why I'm here. It's the breath I breathe. It's, yeah, the blood that ran through my veins, you know. It's honoring everybody who spoke and who walked this path before me. And... Mm -hmm. And have opened the the doors for us to be artists today. You know, this sort this reality that we live wasn't possible ten years ago. I can do everything from my phone. I can be as creative as I want to be, <laughs> and nobody is going to police me or tell me what I can or cannot do. Simple. I'm so so happy that you are allowed to be creative remotely, because you know in that breath. I, want to, I really want to thank you for just reminding us how creativity can inspire the world. And before we watch the video, I want to share a line from the poem. But before I share that line, is there any closing remarks that you want to share with the audience before you watch the video? Maybe just this. Um, now is the time. If there's a DIY project or something creative that you've wanted to do. We don't know when we'll have an opportunity like this again. We don't know when the world will stop and be able to take a breath. What is a beautiful line that Mal had? I can feel the earth breathe. You know, it, we, we don't know when the time will, will happen again. You know, I painted this piece behind me. I've never painted before in my life. Um, you know, I just went and bought canvas, bought paint, and I was like, I'm going to paint. And take now is the time. Explore that creativity and, and dive into, into those aspects of self that we never have time for. And really just allow whatever is there to come out and, and honor the space that we are in because it, it really is a, a breathing space. It really is a healing space. Thank you, Winslow, for reminding us that we need to do more than just sit and inviting us to thrive because what we are is alive. What we are is living and what we play is life. We are about to watch the reboot of that poem. Thank you. Enjoy everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Life, the continuous flow we find ourselves in, subject to tides of birth and rebirth, able to survive and thrive, to recreate, to redirect, to rethink and reevaluate life. Let's celebrate the achievements that the hurt and pain gives us, the silent joys in every heartbreak, all the challenges that increase our capacity to grow so that we are no longer slaves to the seasons or caught in the flow searching for reasons on the way to go. Find your own rhythm. Harness your own wisdom. Break away from the voice that keeps you on the paved path, too afraid to follow your own star or to deviate from the pack. To be the lone voice in the white noise of opinions, the harmony opposing the melody of conformity. What if we had immunity from conformity? 
was stripped of all our self-importance, who would we be beyond skin color and hair texture or the inherent need to fight, to struggle, and to be subservient to schools of thought and social systems that don't serve us nor our needs, past the need to achieve, to excel, or to show them that we are better than their expectations of us. If we could see past the trivial things and alter this frequency, could we possibly be happy? Is this what life is seeking to teach us? That there is an innate truth that lives within us, a longing that exists past the veil that separates, a kinship born from a singular need. Let's honor that need and set our happiness free. Therein lies the joy, the beauty, the peace we pray for, the heaven we seek, the golden thread that binds us beyond the perception of separation, beyond the intellect and the need to be right, and stand vindicated in this inherent hate and the need to fight. Within all of us is a desire to be happy. Why not give that happiness a chance to shine, to illuminate our lives, to rise like the sun and clear us of all our versions, to bathe us in the light of love and self-acceptance, so that we can grow with each and every heartbeat, every tear, every smile, and every fear, refining our spirit, so that in this continuous flow we can let go of the things that no longer serve us. Let's find our way in this new day. Let's give our happiness a time to shine. Let's do more than survive, let's thrive. Because what we are is alive. What we are is living. And what we play is life. You are the first artists on our TEDx Cape Town virtual stage. Wow. All of us? I want to be the first company, that's all I can say. Incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. Like that. We're on the same journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are. I felt all of you so much. No, you know what I love? I love that we were all like we're speaking for one voice. The more I'm listening to this, I've had this exact thought. I've gone through this exact thing. We mm. can't ignore the synchronicity there is mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. So when you ask the first question that's been uploaded to all the artists, how do you get yourself in the zone for creativity? Do you have special rituals or routines? Let's start with Zolani, Mal, Justine, Winslow to answer that question. Okay, well, I. I, I feel like it's a marathon, not not like a short sprint. So there's like things that I feel like I continuously have to do, like meditation, um, like like real self care practices to to be able to keep myself able to get into that creative space of flow. So it's difficult for me to like, it's, it's, yeah, just to be creative for like a, a short. <laughs> A short stint, you know what I mean? Like I it relies on me taking care of myself for yeah, for a period. Mal, what do you do to get in the zone? I feel like I feel like my creativity interrupts my life all the time. I could be driving and with and then I'd like have to do something about it immediately. <laughs> so it comes in, as a wind and I often feel like I need to capture it otherwise it will pass me and it does and I think that's the heartbreaking part about being an artist is that I think we do have these ideas and they feel so real we can taste them and then the stress of the day happens you go home and you, you can't even remember what the melody was or what that line that sparked that thing was so it can be quite heartbreaking for me uh, but in terms of like making, sh like trying to really put myself in a position where I can create, um, I would say tea is my number one, everything, every time. It just helps me settle in and it reminds me I don't have to go anywhere right now. Because if I did, 
I wouldn't be drinking something that needs to cool down first. So I don't know. It's an automatic sort of we're here and let's see. Yeah. And then just cancel, cancel the plans for the day because once you get going, you really don't want to feel interrupted by another. Christine? I uh, have this thing called, you know, balancing the doing with some being. And so um, I have this deep affinity mm -hmm. I'm in nature, particularly Squirrel Park in, uh, in Rondebosch off Kielgrim Road. Actually, I've gone on so many dates on that in this park. <laughs> that was my inner monologue. That was my inner monologue. <laughs> and, you uh, to see what's going on? I hear it. <laughs> I thought they go very really differently in my mind. Um, <laughs> um, in any event, I, I really just enjoy connecting with nature, um, connecting with trees and plants, and just sitting there with my journal, reflecting, meditating. Um, and very often, like, because um, I always believe, you know, like, Creativity comes through me, not from me. And I always find when I'm in those, those precious spaces, uh, um, um, all sorts of things emerge, insights, reflections, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. the nature. Yeah. Winterlow, what do you do to create big games? Um, <laughs> everybody, what everybody else has said, yes. Um, but you know what I've also done is I've cultivated a life that is conducive for the creativity. Do you know what I mean? I'm a plant parent, and especially when lockdown happened, when everybody else was rushing, running off the toilet paper, I was running to buy plants. I was like, I'm going to keep myself busy with potting soil on my balcony. And, and really just, you know, so cultivating that kind of life has worked for me. So what was challenging for me, in particular in the beginning of lockdown, was I couldn't go for a walk. Because that clears my brain in the morning so really cultivating that's a life that is conducive for creativity because also have other things that i do you know we all have other things that we do so i've always got a big book around that is my is this a3 mm -hmm. book that i've got white pages so that's for when the creativity hits i write it all down now so that's how i mitigate losing the thought mm -hmm. and then just giving myself moments where i'll be like okay so i record on sunday mornings that's my new thing so every sunday morning I record and I'm just de developing habits because you have to. Otherwise, it's just all, there's so much that goes on. And yeah, that, you know, we're just busy people, I guess. But it's nice to just, I'm cultivating that space and saying, listen, my space has to be conducive to my spirit. And there's again that ownership. Yeah. I think we all do that. I'm sure all of us live in, I mean, Mal, I saw you live in a magical space, you know? So, Lani, there's lots of love around you. You know, that's, everything is good. Like, you have to cultivate the space for it. Mm. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. I love all these responses. It's so inspiring. But the next question yeah. is an interesting one. Storm is asking, how do you work through bouts of doubt and pick yourself up in the day just to create? Yeah. No, I mean, that's, 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 that's an amazing, that's a, Great question. I agree, Storm. Um, I, I, I mean, there, there, there are ways. One way that I am, that I've been using of late is, um, is finding out where that voice comes from. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I've, I feel like I've been going through a process of remembering myself um, and really figuring out where my story has changed or where I've picked up which storyline. And which part of me, how, how old I was when, from, from whence that doubt is speaking kind of thing. And almost putting a character on that. So for me, like one of my character, my doubt characters is like a little shark. You know, um, I think Winslow mentioned RuPaul's saboteur, internal saboteur. That's like, for me, like, it's a in this process, is a shark. There's a little shark that comes around and says like, you're not good enough. You know, you're, you know you, you, you're not relevant or you're not whatever, all this, all this bullshit. And, and so, and so really identifying where that voice is coming from and either sitting down and negotiating with that, with physicalizing, because when we put it in the body, it like, it, 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 it makes it, it, I don't know, there's something about the process. So like physicalizing that shark and you feel that shark, what's that shark like, you know what I mean? Or, or that child or that whoever it was who started with that voice, physicalizing it, seeing it, um, interacting with it, either kicking that shark to the curb or 
saying, you know, let's talk about this. You know, okay, you were six years old and this happened and that's why you have that experience. That's that, that's where you're talking from. Um, what can we do? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah, they, they're, but it, it's, it's, a, it's real. Doubt is, self-doubt is real. Um, but you can decide. You're in charge. It's your story, mm-hmm. your life. Yeah. I'm going to invite everyone else to, to like share, you know, how do you work through your dark mouth? Um, oh, it's still a process for me. It's not like I have any sort of ritual that keeps me going. I must say that um, I've been quite a nomad for the past few years. And so it hasn't sort of allowed me to build a routine that can sort of keep me and I'm... I'm going to be completely honest and say that I'm I'm struggling even presently. So it's not like I have uh, anything in particular, but I can say that my loved ones, my goodness, the support system that I have, my family, mm-hmm. my friends, having real conversations with them, feeling so held. Um, and also just when you, and my brother used to say this a lot as well, it is when you look around you and, and the friends that you keep, that helps you remind you how brilliant you are, because that's technically who you've decided to decorate your life with and who have been attracted to your space. So surely I'm doing something right if I've got all these incredible people around me. And that definitely helps me going in general, regardless of how nomadic I am. But I can't say there's any specific ritual just yet. I'm still finding Mm -hmm. that. Awesome. Winslow, how do you work through your dots? Um, that's such a well, that's a question, eh? Um, I think in yeah, just to agree with um, Zolani, you have to confront it at times. You have to figure out where that voice comes from. Um, what which memory is it attached to? What did you go through? What is that trauma that sits there? You know, and 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 be ready to confront it. You know, because that is really self doubt is keeping you from being as great as you want to be and we all deal with it i deal with it constantly even putting out sugar water i did it so silently because i was like i just give it a soft landing <laughs> and it'll do what it does <laughs> because you know we still go through it but then there's yeah hey i don't know guys that I, I maybe it's just something that we just all have to face and it's something that just really forces us to want to be artists to want to create or yeah. to want to push forward you know Maybe it's part of the process to keep us humble. I don't know. <laughs> but I think we all go through it. You know, some of us have yeah. just been, we just, some of us just confronted head on. <laughs> um, because we have to, because the, the, the need to say what we need to say, to tell our stories, um, yeah. is, is more important than that voice. You know? Yeah. I'd like to also just keep checking with Rishin. Rishin, in your session, you talk about power. Yeah. So pie is most definitely goes so pie is most definitely is 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 something that I, I literally was being very serious when I said I have a reminder on my phone. One o'clock the notification goes off and it says Rushdin do a pie check-in. <laughs> you know? And um it's it's so powerful because like Zulani, just to echo her sentiments, you've got to recognize you can't change something that you don't recognize first, you know. That's the one thing. The other thing for my cancer journey is um, you know, since September 2012, for some reason, I don't attach to outcomes anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, the, the cliche, let go and let God. So it's like, if I have a meeting with Joe at Cavendish and he doesn't rock up, you know, and then like Stephen Covey's quote comes in my mind and says, Rushdin, there are no such thing as problems, only opportunities. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to pay some of my account. I'm in Cavendish. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> so I think it's about um, definitely. A, you, you can't change something if you don't, you don't acknowledge first. Definitely pies helps you pull yourself towards yourself. And then it's mindset execution, you know. And then last but not least, you know, um, and I'm going to quote Tony Robbins now because I absolutely love Tony Robbins, which is around true north on the campus will always be gratitude. And he says, if we are to get beyond scarcity, then we need yeah. to stop. Then we need to start beyond scarcity. And that means taking a moment to value and appreciate the precious things that we are privileged to have in our lives right now, you know. 
and then act from awareness. Mindfulness, not perfection. Balance, not perfection. Progress, not perfection. So I am aware that we've got quite a few questions, but I'm like, this, uh, time is of the essence. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone uh, gets an opportunity to quickly respond to some of these questions. So instead of doing a round of thoughts, I'm going to just pick a few questions that I'll kind of popcorn to there for people. And uh, I feel like we've already responded to Eloise's question question on a coping strategy. I think all of you have touched on how you've managed during lockdown. So uh, we'll, we'll serve that question. But I see that here's a, a question in terms of, do you experience any internal struggle between wanting to speak to larger causes and messages in your art and simply wanting to create just people that are art? And um, is there anyone that would really like to answer that question? Because I feel like if we can have one response to that, that would be amazing. The internal struggle between speaking to a cause versus actually just creating for the love of art. I'm going to pop one to Zalakini. I, I saw a nod in your head there. Oh, I, I thought Mel. I thought Mel. Mel, Mel was nodding to to take it. You were ahead. Hey. No, I was actually trying to find it because I think my internet is glitchy. I'm trying to find the question so I can read it. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I think I think Renel to pick you up a little bit. I don't know. If, I, I think it's. Oh, I I I was struggling to pick you up a little bit. Um, the is is it the conflict between um sort of uh, a, a message or like like a public's what? Yeah, say it again. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. How do you deal with that internal struggle between creating for cause, like you've done with your public service announcements, versus creating art just for the love of it and music for the love of it? Oh, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like you know, for me personally, I feel like um, more and more my mandate is becoming clear. You know, like more and more like what what I feel like I stand for is becoming clear. and. And so it becomes easier to to align my my product, for want of a better word, my my art, with um, you know, with what what feels good to me, you know. So it so so it's so it's so like there's some equalization that that seems to be happening more and more. Um, you know, the the more that I think the more that we connect with our authentic selves, the more that. You know what what we produce is, you know, I, is is gonna be dope. What's <laughs> oh, up? Oh, um, oh, sorry. I just wanted to say, you know, you know, it is the personal is political, man. You know, yeah. the personal is political. You know what you like. You write from your perspective, you know you, and that is what aligns your art and your purpose, and or your message and your purpose, or your work and your purpose. Because a person is political. I'm a political statement because I choose to live the life that I live and say the things that I want to say, mm. you know, and express mm. my life, whatever that life is, you know. Speaks to like you know the importance of 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 queer stories being told from queer perspectives, mm. you know, to yeah. to challenge. <laughs> You know, the stories that are being told, you know, and to really mm -hmm. say, okay, but ownership of, of spaces. Yeah. Anyways, sorry guys, I just I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So the, there's a question specific to does storytelling from vantage point of queerness influence your work conceptually, technically and artistically. Yo. Um, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you see me think about well, like your question. <laughs> um, I think I just said it. You know, it's again that that personal being political. What I was very aware of and conscious of during this project, and you'll see it through the writing. Um, it opens with this piece, um, like men do, really confronting how we as 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 as, as black men love. You know, and 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 the violent nature of that love and why that love is there. So it starts, but it also it's told from a queer perspective. Yeah. You know, because I also have to unlearn 
um, heteronormativity and, and all the socialization that I've been through that says that this yeah. is okay and that isn't okay. Um, so you, you, you write from your, I write from my own space. I write from where, what I know. And this is my story. So it's a story that is still did. And it also um, in the visuals as well, I was very conscious of showing skin because I wanted to say, you know, why can't, I can't, why can't I in the body that I'm in show some skin? Like, you know, because I want to make it provocative. You know, I've got a poem called um, Tall Order about how I like tall guys. And in each verse, I'm discussing the different types that I have. <laughs> And it's beautiful and fun, you know? And I'm like, wow, I'm here, I'm a queer, you know? Take note of me, hear my story. Give us an opportunity to tell the story. Mm. Beautiful. On that note, I want to thank all of you for sharing your journeys with us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep on creating for Bye. Thank you, everyone. Everyone. Cheers, Mark, Delaney, Christian, Winslow. What a powerful event. We thank you for choosing to spend your time with us tonight. We encourage you to act from awareness, to rest, and to discard the messages that are not in alignment with your personal truth so that you are able to wake up tomorrow and use your creativity to inspire hope and social change. Inspire us, show kindness. Spread the word, not the virus. Inspire us, unite us. Do your best, do not touch your face. Hey, listen, I tell you why it's this. Every spot that you touch, hand, hand, small hand, any hand could happen. So you got to keep your own to yourself. Come, run out. You can reach any place. No. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all the inspire Show kindness, kindness is your way. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all the Inspire world. us, unite us. Slap your hands in the air, touch your heart, show you care. Use your eyes, use a smile, many ways we can share. Wear a mask on your face, touch your heart, show you care. Use your eyes, use your smile. Many ways we can share. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all. Inspire us. Show kindness. Kindness is your way. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all. The Inspire world. us. Unite us. Now let's wash our hands for 20 seconds. One, One two, two, three, four, five, six, six seven. Eight. Eight, nine, nine ten. ten. Now let's wash our precious hands for another ten. ten. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ten. ten. Over, in between, and under. Oh, wow, look at your pretty hands. Keep your distance. Stay at home. Don't shake hands. You can call on the phone. If someone's too close, just say, I, I cannot. You know, I might be fine, but my granny may not. And so we go. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to everyone. Inspire us. Show kindness. Kindness is your way. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all. Inspire us. Unite us. Hello friends, my name is Bobo. Let's unite with Africa Tikkun. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay safe.